Welcome back to the Teen Titans, but more importantly than that, welcome back to Comic Storian. If this is your first time joining us, well, we bring you your favorite comic books digested down into small bites, telling you only the meaty bits of the storyline so that you know what's going on, allowing you to go buy your next comic book and understand the plot lines. We add in some epic music, voices, and occasionally sound effects. All alterations of the panel, sex, and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. Now, this is the second storyline in the Teen Titans Rebirth storyline, and in our last video, Damian Wayne gathered and formed the new Teen Titans to fight against Ra's al Ghul's Demon's Fist. Through a vicious battle, the Titans managed to push back the Demon's Fist, only to have Ra's escape with Damien's cousin, Mara. Now, with the Titans' tower built, Damien looks to the future to see where this new group of teen superheroes will go. As Damien watches the sea from the Titans' tower, he listens to the news reports on the escape of over 50 prisoners who broke out of maximum security prison facilities and have yet to be found. However, in other news, shark attacks are up. Suddenly, a pelican swoops in squawking, and then Engar transforms, telling him that if he didn't know, that was pelican for it's time for lunch. Damien tells him that sneaking up on him could lead to deadly consequences, so he may want to rethink think before doing that again. Gar asks, what is he doing here anyway? Coming up with a master plan for toilet papering the Justice League Tower? And Damien tells him that he's just playing. Before Gar can even finish asking playing what, Goliath shoots out of the water, dropping a large stick, and he begins to lick Gar. As the two head back inside, Gar asks, why does he keep that obnoxious bat wookie thing around? To which Damien asks, where does this costume go when he transforms? Both excellent questions, Gar responds. Once inside, Gar serves up his mouth-watering platter of tofu for lunch. And Wally says that life is not worth living without double bacon cheeseburgers. Gar changes into a cow, telling him that that's like cannibalism, dude. And Raven asks Wally if he can do that thing. And in seconds, Wally runs out, and then he comes back with pizzas, shouting that Central City's finest pies are here. There's even a veggie one for Gar. And just as everyone sits down to eat, the security alarms begin to go off, and the island begins to go into full combat mode. Everyone runs outside, and just then, Damien shouts, Titans go? And that's when he sees the reporter from the news telling him that Mr. Logan said to be here for an interview at 1 o'clock. Gar shrugs, stating, Oopsie, kind of forgot to tell you guys about that one. <laughs> And while Gar goes to show the reporter around the base, over in New Mexico, Jackson Hyde plays with the water from his fish tank as his mother yells at him. She storms into his room asking how many times does she have to tell him he can't do that, not even with the door closed and the blind shut. He was already born with marks on his arms that people think are tattoos. Now he's bleaching his hair, so why does he try so hard to be different? As Jackson holds up a ball of water with fish in it, he says that he's not trying, he is different. Back over at Titan's Tower, Gar's interview is about to finish when suddenly the reporter is grabbed and pulled underwater. Later that night in New Mexico, Jackson sits out with his boyfriend, telling him that he really should just tell his father the truth about them so that they can stop trying to hide like this. Kenny says that it's not really that simple. His dad is one of the good old boys. Big belt buckle and American flag bumper sticker. Jackson then wraps his arm around Kenny, telling him, Look, there's a video that went viral about the Teen Titans. He can't stop imagining what it must be like for them, living on their own, no one telling them how to live their lives. He opens up a water bottle, saying that he wants to show him something. Just like when they first got together and he would sing a country song for him. Just stay for this. The markings on Jackson's arms begin to glow, and the water flows from the bottle and swirls around Kenny, who begins to scream. He smacks the bottle, telling him to stop. What the hell is this? And Jackson tells him that it's okay. He's just like the Teen Titans. And Kenny walks away, telling him that he's had enough of this hiding. It's time for them to go their separate ways. So with that, Jackson packed up his belongings and headed off to San Francisco to tell himself that he needs to understand who he is. He needs to stop hiding himself away. And he needs to start where there are new beginnings, where he may belong. Meanwhile, back with the Titans, Gar asks how does he look in his otter form, and Damien says that he looks like bait. Gar then says that he deserves that. He was the one who brought the reporter into their base, and she disappeared on his watch. Raven reports that she's not picked up anything, and Starfire says that she circled the Bay Area twice and found nothing. Damien tells everyone to just keep an eye out, and Gar heads back into the water to look around. Just as he looks down towards the sea floor, he sees a giant thing swimming by fast. Gar changes into a fish, and he jumps out of the water, shouting, guys, I think we're gonna need a bigger boat! And that's when King Shark jumps out of the water, destroying Damien's Titan boat. While King Shark makes his way towards everyone, Damien shouts that this guy is a killing machine, but this is what they were trained for. Begin Maneuver X! Wally then asks, which one is that? The one where I run in circles making a whirlpool, or the one where I twirl my arms to make a cyclone? Raven tells him that it doesn't take a mind reader to sense that Damien is going to be so mad. King Shark punches Damien, and Starfire catches him, and he shouts that she wasn't supposed to be there, she was supposed to be over there. Didn't anyone study the playbook that he gave him? King Shark then escapes back into the waters and 
swims over to his hideout underneath Alcatraz. Once inside, he tells the escaped prisoners that he's gotten the attention of the so-called heroes. With the reporter's help, soon they will have the attention of all of the air breathers. So let the feeding frenzy begin. Back at the Titan's Tower, Damien begins to prepare for the next battle when a voice calls out, Ahem, yeah, hi. Everyone turns back to see Jackson, and Damien runs over asking how did he get past their security? He should have been shocked, missiled, trapped, doored at least a dozen times. Jackson points at Goliath, stating, Actually, the big furry thing let me in. Before Damien can even yell at Goliath, Jackson tells him not to be mad at him, he just didn't know where else to go. His name is Jackson Hyde, and he was kind of hoping that they could help him figure out a few things. So he came for an audition? Damien walks past him, telling him, not a chance. And Jackson says that he can speak with water, he can move it with his mind, and, and Damien stops him asking, and what, squirt gun? You want to come play in our clubhouse? He goes on saying that this team will be the ground version of the Watchtower team. Everyone has been recruited for a specific reason, so bottom line is, he wouldn't fit in. Jackson begins to head out, saying that if he doesn't belong here, he won't belong anywhere. While everyone says that, that was a bit harsh of him, Damien tells everyone that he's pinpointed King Shark's base, so they gotta go. Suddenly the monitors change and everyone sees the reporter from before announcing that she is broadcasting from the Alcatraz Island with an exclusive interview with... But King Shark interrupts her shouting, King Shark, and I have a message for everyone. The air breathers damned these prisoners in their previous life, so it is I who has given them a second chance. My soldiers are more evolved, outfitted with gills, claws, and teeth. And within moments, Gar bursts through the prison walls. While everyone follows Gar in, he shouts, Newsflash, we're here to kick your butt. Everyone quickly begins to fight off the shark prisoners, while Starfire tells the human prisoners that she believes the human expression for this is, run for your lives. Wally begins to run with Raven on his back, and as he passes by some people, Raven touches and starts to teleport people away. King Shark begins to run back outside, and as he leaps into the water, Damien throws a battering at him and pulls him back in. King Shark grabs the wire around him, flinging Damien over to him, and he grabs him, telling him that he got himself a minnow. But before King Shark can sink his teeth into Damien, water begins to rise and knock the two of them down. And Jackson asks if he really just did that. Damien shouts for him to get away! He's just gonna get himself killed! But with the wire still wrapped around King Shark, he jumps into the water, pulling Damien with him. Just as King Shark gets to the depths that would crush a normal human bone, Jackson swims down with a watery blade, thinking, Yeah, I could die, but it's time to use this power for good. Jackson slashes away at King Shark's chest, and he quickly grabs Damien, swimming back up. However, there's one thing that Jackson needed. Air! He quickly gasps, but rather than drowning in water, he breathes it. As Jackson rides the water, carrying Damien out, he tells himself, Yeah, this is where I belong. Later that night in the Titan's Tower, Damien calls out to Jackson, telling him that they need to talk. Jackson says, yeah, he knows. He sucks, and he should just go home, right? And Damien says that now that the shark mutants have been rounded up and sent to Star Labs for questions, they couldn't find King Shark. So he's come here to give him this, and he tosses him a box. Jackson pulls out a uniform, and Damien says that he was working on a Hydra suit for himself, so it might be a little tight. Jackson asks if this means that he can stay with the Teen Titans, and Damien tells him that it's just a costume, so don't get too comfortable. Meanwhile, back over at the Nemo outpost, Blackjack asks King Shark if he really thought it would be wise to broadcast himself like that. But as they talk, a voice interrupts them and asks King Shark to tell him more about this boy, the one who speaks to water. King Shark looks over at the voice and tells him that he thought he was dead, and Black Manta steps out telling him, I want to hear everything about him. And that concludes the next Teen Titans storyline. Now they're gonna be wrapped up into the Lazarus contract, which is a Deathstroke tie-in next. So you're gonna have to follow that if you wanna know what's going on. But don't worry, we'll have you covered right here at Comic Story. So make sure you subscribe to this channel so you know what's going on. And don't forget, you can always follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Comic Story. And I'll see you next time right here.